Uh, first question here in the front, Dan. Jimmy, after last night, is there a sale at Big Face the morning after? Or I don't do sales. I don't do free coffee. Um, we're going to do everything the exact same like we're supposed to do on the basketball floor. We're going to keep our prices at 20 bucks. <laughs> how is how is um, stuff like that helped kind of make this stay as tolerable as possible? Um, you know, just like Jay said, it, it helps to take your mind away from the game. It gives us something else to talk about, compete at a little bit. And um, just another way to, to talk through the game, sitting over coffee, sitting over wine, a beer, whatever it may be. Um, and more than anything, it just brings us together even more because we really do enjoy being around one another. Next question is Ethan Skolnick. Jimmy, considering the stakes and, and the stage and, and you obviously, you guys being a couple men down, is that the best game you've ever played? Uh, probably not. I was really good whenever I was in high school. And I played in this league where I played against like all 45-year-old men and I really dominated whenever I was like 17. Um, so this is up there, but back then I was killing them. Next question, Dave in the center. Jimmy, uh, from the time you came into this league, late first round pick, I think 30th, um, and you know, finding your way into that Bulls rotation to all the stops you've made since, was there a time where you changed your own expectation for yourself, uh, where you're like, I can not just be an all-star, I could be you know, X, I could be a max player, et cetera? Definitely. Uh, I think it helped to have like Lou Al and, and Ronnie Brewer and then Coach Adrian Griffin they're always telling me, like, you're going to make your mark in this league. You deserve to be here. You belong here. And then that's when I really started to be like, you know what? Like, if these guys are telling me that they've been here way longer than I have, they know what it takes. That's when I started thinking, you know what? Maybe you can become a decent player in this league. Um, you know, I always say, yeah, I'm going to make the NBA Finals. I want to play in the NBA Finals. I want to um, win a championship. And that time for me is now. Uh, so talking about it then, being in that position now, you know, I'm here for a reason, just like everybody else is. Mark? Jimmy, what do you think um, NBA fans, kind of the world has learned about you over these last few months on and off the court that perhaps they didn't get an opportunity to know before or perhaps they had the wrong idea before? For me, that uh, I'm just all about winning. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. If you can guarantee me a win, um, and I realize that nothing's guaranteed, but um, I'll do whatever you ask me to do to put my team in the best position to win. That's it. And, and also, in terms of your – with so much love for the three right now, can you take me into the mentality of your mid-range game and how you use it to get a triple-double and, and not shoot a three and still have a, a, a brilliant old-school game, I guess? Uh, I mean, I think it's it's easy whenever you have the guys that I have around me so many good shooters that you can't leave. Like I say, I have the easy job. They give me so many gaps um, to get into the paint, to shoot a pull-up J, to get to the free throw line. And um, I'm going to continue to play that way. I, I take what the game gives me. Um, whatever my teammates ask me to do, I'm pretty sure if they ask me to go out there and make a couple of threes, I'm capable of it. But if it's not broken, don't fix it. Next question, Rob Mahoney from The Ringer. Hey, Jimmy, could you speak to the impact that Jay and Andre have had on the series so far and, and just what you've come to expect from those guys since they joined the team? Uh, I mean, they're winners. They're winners. And they got a difficult job in um, guarding AD and then guarding LeBron and then going down there and having to make shots and do everything for us all over the floor. Um, all the stuff that you don't see on the stat sheet is what those guys do for us. And they're all winning plays, every single one of them. Um, we respect that. We love that. We wouldn't be here without them. Um, and I'm just, I tell them as much as I can, how much I appreciate them, how much I appreciate playing alongside those guys and for what they do for me, for our young guys, and just for the organization as a whole. I do. Next question, Mark Medina. Hey, Jimmy, what, what's been your day-to-day -day approach in the offseason and then during the season and film sessions, practices uh, that that has gotten to where you are with your performances? Um, 
just work. Uh, make sure your body's ready to go. I got some, you know, James Scott is who I do all my agility and, and, and weightlifting with whenever I'm back home. Armando Rivas, he's, uh, he's here with me to make sure my body's working the way that it's supposed to. I got Coach Quinny, Coach O, DC. Um, I got a lot of people that really help me to be great and to be ready to perform at the highest level. So all in all, it's, it's a lot of work that goes into it, like everybody's doing right now. But I think I got the, the best of the best rolling with me. Next question is Jason Jackson. Jimmy, you've made it plain over the year uh, with Miami that you there's a certain way you like to play, particularly on the offensive end. And it's much more of a collective than maybe the dominant way you did last night. And coach told us, I'm checking my notes here, we don't care what he thinks that it's time for you to continue to be this dominant. Is that the only trigger you need is uh, coach and the staff and your teammates not caring about the way you would like to play and demanding that type of dominance? No, uh, I, I, I think they know what budgets to press to get me to play the way that they want me to play. Um, but like, I, I just want to win. I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's winning basketball all the time. I don't, um, I think winning basketball is, Duncan's going to go off for six or seven threes. Tyler can do that. Kana can do that. Jay's going to have a big night. Um, we're all locked in defensively. To me, those are the best wins. Um, I mean, you know, we, we celebrate every win, but when somebody else has a great night that nobody expected. I, I love it. I, I really do. Like, you could say I'm supposed to do what I did last night, but I don't think so. I think... I'm waiting on Tyler, Duncan, Bam, one of those guys that have a night to where I'm just like, I get the opportunity to play with that. What a blessing. Next question, back right, Tim. Jimmy, to that, one, are you willing? I mean, if this is the way it's going to have to be, are, are you willing to do that the rest of the way, if that's going to be what it takes? I know you want your other guys You've, 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 you've tried to get them involved all year, but are you willing, if, if game three plays out again in four, five, six, or seven, do you accept that? I mean, it, I have to. I think as long as we win, um, everybody's happy with that. But we got to win. Uh, whatever it takes to get to that point, yeah. I, I can't say that that's what it's going to come to, but if coaches are, hey, I need you to do this, my guys like, yo, we need you to do this. I got to go out there and I got to do it. I got to make sure that we win. And, and as I'm sure your body knows, you have played almost every minute the last two games. You got followed 11 times last night. I don't know how many times you got hit. What is, I, you spoke about what your trainer did with you in the off season, but what's the process last night, this morning, to start rebuilding the machine and get ready for tomorrow? A lot of rest, a lot of treatment, um, a lot of everything. But I think a lot of it's, a lot of it's mental. You know your body's gonna be hurting, but you gotta you gotta tell your mind and tell your body to cut it out. And I think that's that's where I'm at at this point. Um, everybody's hurting, not just me. Everybody on my roster, everybody on the Lakers roster, we're all you know nicked up. We all got some pain, but uh, we're all coming out there to compete. Last question from the Zoom, Jose Pineda. Uh, Jimmy, just following up on what Tim Reynolds said, uh, Jeff Ziegler today described in an article that you were uh, indefatigable, that you don't, you, you can't be fatigued. I know I had to look oh, it up as well. Uh, that, that's, that's impossible. <laughs> I had to look it up as well. And capable of being fatigued was the word, which I thought was a, 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 a great use of that word, which I didn't even know what it meant, what it meant. So following up with what Tim Reynolds said, you know, how, how long for you to recover? Cause you, you had to go two ways. You played the most minutes as a heat player, regular season or playoffs. Uh, you personally, uh, last night. So how, how long does that take, as Tim said, to, you know, for you to recover? And, and how do you feel? You know, I think uh, I actually think I recover um, quite fast because all I can hear is Spo over and over again telling me how I'm not tired. That's literally what he tells me uh, in the middle of the game. And I'm just like, all right, coach, I, I guess you know how I'm feeling. Yeah, I'm not tired. And know. Um, so going into it, it's like you can't be tired. You can't be uh, banked up. These guys need you to count on you. And um, if they see you, that's how they're going to be. 
So to the best of my ability, I'm working on my body. I go in there this morning, I see Tyler in there. I see Duncan in there. Uh, I see Myers in there. I see everybody in there. So I know that they're feeling the same way I am, but they're, they're getting ready.